Whoa there Nelly, the title is actually 100% accurate. I will copy a flamingo in this video, but in ways you may not expect. A while back I made a video on photogrammetry, which is the method in which you can take photos of an object from every conceivable angle and then have a computer program reconstruct it into a 3D model of the same object. That video came out over three years ago by now, and quite a few things have changed in the field. So it's definitely time for a follow-up, comparing a few different methods, and turning up the difficulty a little bit to see what these programs can actually produce. So follow along and learn how easy it is to actually create some really high quality 3D models yourself with minimal effort. Welcome back to Switch and Lever. Okay, so let's get the boring stuff out of the way first. We're going to compare three different methods of doing photogrammetry. First, we'll take a look at commercial software, the very same software I ended up recommending in the last video, 3DF Zephyr. We're then going to compare that to Reality Capture, which works more on a model of paying for every scan you make, rather than a set fee for the software itself. Lastly, due to popular demand since the last video, I will compare it to the leading free solution in the photogrammetry field called Meshroom and see how that holds up against the competition. But let's not delay any further, let's jump directly into scanning. I'm not going to cover the exact methodology step by step of how I made these scans. That's really what the previous video is for. But each program worked from the same images. And to make the comparison fair, I turned up the settings for 3DF Zephyr to match the default detection and reconstruction densities of the two other programs, as its default settings created lower resolution models, however blazing fast. The first comparison is hardly worth mentioning. It's made up of 29 images captured with an old iPhone 6 of a crack in the pavement. Each program was able to reconstruct this crack with pretty high quality, as well as good quality textures. Reality Capture though could not manage to match all the 29 photos with each other, only managing to match 20 of them. But on the other hand, it was able to process the whole model in just over 3 minutes. Zephyr on the other hand took just over 4 minutes, while Meshroom lagged behind at over half an hour. The models though are comparably high quality. While the mesh out of reality capture is much more dense, the quality and reproduction of the smaller details is still better with 3DF Zephyr, which is obvious when you look at the smaller pebbles on the ground. Still though, a completely acceptable result from all three programs. So let's jump directly into Meshroom, the new contender in this video, and explore whether free photogrammetry can hold a candle to paid options. The next capture is of a small 1000 year old rune stone, this one photographed with a proper good quality compact camera, the Sony RX100. It should pose a little bit more of a challenge than the crack did though. Basically with Meshroom the images were just imported and the processing started. It does have a lot of settings and things you can tweak but unfortunately these are poorly documented and it's very uncertain what settings result in what changes, aside from increased processing times. The full calculation of the runestone mesh took over four and a half hours, but it did result in a rather high quality mesh and a good representation of the stone itself. Again though, using the same images, Reality Capture blazed through in only 13 minutes and 20 seconds, where Zephyr lagged behind a little bit at just over an hour. 
All three programs created acceptable results, with Reality Capture and Zephyr having an edge over Meshroom, as Meshroom left holes in the geometry at the back and top of the runestone. The next test the three programs was subjected to was a Caldo Converter, an old spaceship looking thing from the local steel mill now on permanent outdoor display. This is a huge object, and because of that I could not photograph it above a certain height. Beyond being intricate and full of holes, it was interesting to see how each program would deal with the missing photos from the top of the converter. Where the three programs before were reasonably similar in quality, here we're starting to notice some major differences. First of all, the mesh out of Meshroom, after over 11 hours of processing, is lumpy and bumpy and riddled with disjointed and missing geometry, and holes straight through the ground, which really should have been the easiest part to reconstruct. The mesh out of Reality Capture is again very dense, but also has struggled with surface smoothness as well as some tighter inside geometries. Both Meshroom and Reality Capture decided to incorporate part of the sky into the model as well, giving it an interesting blue hat. The model out of Zephyr has an all-around smoother appearance, and manages certain small detail, especially on the inside, better than the other two programs. Also largely managed to avoid a large blue hat. So, let's finally take a closer look at 3DF Zephyr. Since my last video, they've recently come out with a new major update, which promises better results than previous versions. This test was set up to see how the different programs deal with geometry which is very uniformly colored, as well as translucent, so lighting doesn't really behave as a fully opaque object would. It's also made to see how the programs deal with big and high resolution datasets, as this scan was set up using 320 megapixel photos. So therefore it's a doubly challenging geometry to reconstruct. The 3DF Zephyr went at it and after about 3.5 hours spat out a wholly acceptable 3D model, with minimal distortions. Reality Capture also took the challenge in stride, and in just over one and a half hour created a rather decent representation of the Flamingo. However, here is where Meshroom really starts falling apart. After a whooping 16 and a half hours, the result it created is honestly terrible. It's full of holes and cavities, and the mesh is entirely unusable for just about any application. While 3D scanning may not be the method of choice to design circuit boards, PCB Way should really be your choice to have them produced. They have long experience in the field and the circuit boards they make hold excellent quality. They even have assembly service which can give you fully populated boards without the need for you to do that work yourself. Head on over to PCBWay.com to check them out. While I have your undivided attention, it's come to my attention that well over 90% of you watching aren't subscribed. What's up with that? Those are rookie numbers. Do me a solid and hit that subscribe button to be notified when a new switch and lever video drops. It would really mean the world to me. At the very least, leave a comment below if there are subjects or projects you would like me to see tackle in the future. Anyway. Back to you, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. So let's move on to the last and possibly most challenging reconstruction of this video. Instead of taking hundreds of photos for this capture, I decided to try filming the object over and over from every angle I could consider, and then take the resulting video file and extract 500 frames to use in the reconstruction. Now, these images won't be as high resolution as the images from the Flamingo reconstruction, as they're only the same size as full HD video, since I don't have a 4K camera. I'm hoping to outweigh that by using more images though, 
and see if 500 images will be enough. Reconstructing with Reality Capture is reasonably easy, as just with 3DF Zephyr, they have a step-by-step -step guide you can follow along in the reconstruction. While I was disappointed that it could only identify the positions of 348 out of the 500 images, it did run quick and created a reasonably okay mesh in just shy of 9 minutes. 3DF Zephyr on the other hand identified 481 positions and created a similarly detailed mesh in about 40 minutes. Meshroom again took much longer than the others, 4 hours and 53 minutes, and the result is missing almost an entire arm and large portions of the tail, which again makes this capture pretty much unusable. So I was going to leave it here, as we've moved through the difficulty levels from easy to hard to nightmare level, but let's turn this one up all the way to 11 and give it the ultimate ultra nightmare difficulty challenge. Copying Michelangelo's David's Now, naturally, I'm not going to go to Florence and take a lot of photos of some statue's junk before being escorted out by security guards, so we're going to have to rely on what we can find online. I've downloaded as many photos of the general p area as I could find, both high resolution and low resolution, from as many different angles as I could possibly find. This is basically nightmare fuel for any photogrammetry program. There is no consistency in lighting, in type of camera, in color, in camera grain, in lens being used, and so and so and so and so forth. The amount of matching guesswork that has to be done will at the very least be entertaining, even if I do not expect it to produce any sort of decent result. And holy nightmare on a stick. I'm half expecting Michelangelo to be brought here by a time traveler just to kick me in the pieces for making this. However, there is a sheen at the tip of the eggplant. While Meshroom made an abomination so horrid it could be issued an automatic suitable for no audiences rating, and Zephyr was only able to make something vaguely d and b shaped. I really have to give it to Reality Capture for making something so reasonably accurate I feel I have to censor it to make it YouTube friendly. Even considering the wide range of images used for this reconstruction, it's amazing any of the programs were able to make anything, even what Zephyr was able to produce is above and beyond what I expected. Of course, this is not what I would recommend anyone doing, but as a stress test to see what's actually possible, it was an interesting exercise. So let's break it quickly down model by model and summarize the benefits and drawbacks for each program. First of all, mesh room. It's great for simpler models or for someone who has a lot of time to experiment and try to figure out what each setting does and have time to wait a really long time for each calculation. A big benefit is of course that it's free, but in my opinion the program has a lot of growing and development left to do to pose any serious competition with commercial solutions. The processing times are just too prohibitive, and the results are for the most part rather low quality and inaccurate. Though it does seem to be really good at matching camera positions, even in some cases better than either of the two other programs, though it does fail at extracting proper points and making a good quality point cloud for mesh extraction, which in turn results in a poor model output at the end. Next up is Reality Capture, and quite frankly it outperformed how I thought it would. Now this is a commercial piece of software, and you can see in the breakdown here what I paid to process each set of images. It's not a lot of money for each scan, but if you're planning to do this in any greater capacity, the costs could quickly increase. Overall, Reality Capture was not able to find the camera positions for as many images as either of the two other programs could, 
but its key point extraction and reconstruction into a mesh is absolutely excellent, and it does create overall pretty good meshes. In fact, I'd say in some cases, like with the flamingo and the large spaceship looking converter, the meshes are actually a bit too dense without adding much more detail to the model. When we're starting to push 27 million faces, it's getting really difficult to actually do anything with the resulting model to process it further in the 3D software of your choosing. Blender, which is my main 3D software, absolutely hated trying to process that mesh, and it took forever to boolean cut away the unnecessary garbage faces surrounding the scene. So, for our last program, the one making a reappearance from our previous video, 3DF Zephyr. This is also a commercial software, but rather than pay for each use, this program has a set license fee. It does come in two basic flavors, a light version which will do everything I have done in this video for 149 euro, or the full software with all bells and whistles for those who really need all the extra features for 3,900 euro. For hobbyists and lighter users, I would obviously recommend the light version, and you can do as much photogrammetry scanning as you wish for as long as you have the program for that cost. In comparison, while reality capture is also good, it wouldn't take you very long to reach the same cost and blow past it, paying for each scan you process. Anyhow, looking at the results from 3DF Zephyr, it holds up really good across the board, with David's p*** as the one exception. While often it has a lower face density than the other two programs, where it actually places that density and how it reads and deals with a lot of the details shows a better understanding of the geometry it's trying to reconstruct. Even in the simplest scene with the crack, it captured the shapes of the surrounding pebbles much better than either Meshroom or Reality Capture. What is actually really good with 3DF Zephyr is that they have a free version, which allows you to get your feet wet and try out photogrammetry with a professional level program which blows Meshroom right out of the water, with the sole limitation of only being able to use 50 images per scan. I would recommend looking through my previous photogrammetry video for more on the limitations of the free versions and how to work with it. 50 images may not sound like a lot, considering I used 500 images in one of the scans in this video, but it's surprising how far it can actually get you and what you can capture. And if you should need more, the option is always open to upgrade in the future. I sincerely hope this gave you a bit deeper understanding and appreciation of the photogrammetry field. It's a field in constant development, with quality increasing in leaps and bounds every year. Since my last video I made, the ease of access to photogrammetry and 3D scanning in general has increased as well, so I am very hopeful as to what the future has to bring. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to smash that like button and leave a comment below, and if you feel like it, watch some more videos from Switch and Lever. Until next time!